I'm going to show you three simple ways to add animations to still images. Um, I always start with uh, high quality full size images and then import them into After Effects. Um, and for our documentaries, we're going to make everything the same uh, size. So make a new composition. Make sure it's 1920, 1080. You can choose HDTV 1080 from the drop down menu. Um, and 10 seconds is going to be a good length for these. So change that to 10 and you'll have a new blank composition. Um, find the image you want, drag it down here, and it'll open it up. This image is actually larger than 1920 by 1080, um, so it's gonna be a good image to do the pan and scan effect on. So if I twirl down my transform menu, I'm gonna set my beginning scale and position. Um, so I'll do it right around there. So click the little stopwatch, and that'll make a keyframe. So I have a beginning, position and scale of my image. And then if I go to the end of my timeline, I can zoom in. That's, generally, you don't want to zoom more than 100% because then you're just going to um, pixelate your image. But I can zoom in. I can also change um, the position of mine. And once I set the beginning keyframe, if I change these values anywhere on the timeline, it automatically adds the other keyframe for me. Um, so if we render this a little bit, we can see that this image now appears to be zooming in and kind of, um, kind of focusing in on the racket in the ball. So that's the pan and scan effect, also known as the Ken Burns effect. All right, I'm gonna do another new composition. Um, use the same settings, okay? And I'm gonna show you guys how to do the auto scroll effect. Um, I think I'm gonna do that with uh, this picture of Bruce Jenner. So drag that down here and it'll open it up in the composition. And this is, uh, this actually doesn't fit in this composition because it's a tall, skinny rectangle, um, but that's fine. This is a good one to use for the auto scroll. So over here in my effects and presets, if I type in auto scroll, um, I want to do auto scroll horizontal, just drag and drop that on the image, and the auto scroll tiles this uh, horizontally and actually plays it. So if I render that one, that's what that effect looks like. Cool, so I've got the pan and scan now the auto scroll, and I'm going to show you one more. Uh, make another new composition, same settings, okay. And I'm going to use this uh, picture of Tommy Smith from Mexico City, drag it in here. I um, actually need to scale this down a little bit so I can see the full image. Cool. And I'm going to put the uh, light rays effect on there. So just drag it, drop it onto my image. This is where my light rays uh, center point is. So I'm going to put that over the glove. It makes these cool light rays, and I actually want to animate that. Um, if I change the shape of my light rays from round to square, and then keyframe the direction, this will actually um, this will move as it plays. I think that'll look kind of cool. So at the beginning of my timeline, I'm going to keyframe the direction of that value. Go to the end of my timeline, and then I'll change the direction so as it plays, that effect will be animated um, and adds you know, some, a compelling, cool movement that draws my attention towards the uh, Black Fist power sloop. Cool, so those were three different ways to animate those images. Um, now the last thing I want to do is export each of those. So if I go File, Export, Add to Render Queue, um, I can click on Lossless. I want to change my uh, format from animation to H264, click OK, OK, and then output to, if I click on the title, that'll let me rename it um, and tell me where to save it. So I'll call this, uh, I don't call it, light rays. And I'll save it on the desktop, save, and the last step is hit render, um, and that's my progress bar. It's exporting as a QuickTime movie to my desktop. You may have some issues rendering it. You may have to uh, save your project and restart the computer if you get any errors and try it again. Um, but yeah, this is uh, how we're going to animate some of our still images for our documentaries.